In this lesson, we will review the muscles of the forearm that make the deep flexors. And in order to understand that, we would have to remove the superficial group and start really from the depths. So we have a very simple line drawing of the forearm. And in the depths of the depth, there is a, a membrane known as the interosseous membrane, be, meaning between bones, which is seen here. It runs between those two forearm bones, the radius and the ulna. And it is an interesting structure because it provides some additional support for these bones in terms of their movements of pronation supination. Uh, but also, more importantly, it provides a site for attachment of some of these deep muscles. And in order to understand these deep muscles, we will go from a deep towards a superficial arrangement, because even within the deep layer, there is the deepest of the deep, which is the first muscle that I'm, I'm, I will put on, which is known as the pronator quadratus muscle, or sometimes called PQ for short, which is over here. It's a small muscle. It's roughly quadrangular in shape, hence the name. And it is pron it pronates, and therefore the name pronation is part of its uh, the muscle nomenclature. And it is attached onto the distal radius. It goes across uh, and attaches onto the distal ulna, and by its action will assist in pronation. But this muscle is covered by the other two muscles that also form the deep layer. The first one of those is the muscle that we can see on the radial side known as flexor pollicis longus, or FPL. It attaches onto the radius and the interosseous membrane and has a tendon which goes into the thumb and is seen here. So this is the FPL, flexor pollicis longus, and it goes and attaches all the way up to the distal phalanx of the thumb. And like any other uh, muscle uh, tendon, it will uh, flex or it will have an action on each joint that it crosses. So it has a little bit of movement on the wrist, a little bit of movement on the small joints of the thumb as well. The other muscle, the third and final muscle of this deep layer, is the flexor digitorum profundus, or FDP. This is a muscle that is more on the ulnar side, and it has an attachment onto the ulna and the interosseous membrane. And like its other muscle, which is more superficial to it, the FDS, the flexor digitorum superficialis, it also divides into four segments and attaches onto the phalanges, the small bones of the four fingers. In this case, in, in the case of FDP, the tendons go all the way to the distal phalanges of the four fingers. In terms of innervation of these uh, muscles, the FPL is uh, innervated by the median nerve, which is also the case with the pronator quadratus. The flexor digitorum profundus has a very interesting innervation supply, uh, nerve supply. It is innervated by the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. The median nerve supplies that segment of the muscle that ultimately provides tendons for the index and the middle fingers, whereas the ulnar nerve supplies the ulnar half of this muscle or the medial half of this muscle that provides tendons to the little finger and the ring finger. Let's now look at a deeper dissection, a photograph of the deeper dissection of this area of the uh, forearm, the anterior forearm. And just to orient, we are still looking at the right forearm, and therefore this is the more lateral side. This is more medial. Uh, sometimes this is also known as the radial side. And this is known as the ulnar side. And so, uh, and the deep and the superficial muscles have been removed. So we can see some of these superficial cut muscles over here. This is, these are all the superficial cut muscles that have been cut away. And we can also see their tendons more uh, distally uh, at the wrist. And so with the superficial muscles removed, we can now focus on the deep muscles. And the first muscle that we see from the deep group here is the flexor pollicis longus, which is this muscle over here. This is the flexor pollicis longus. It's on the radial side of the forearm, and its tendon will make its way to the distal phalanx of the thumb. The other muscle, which is seen on the medial or ulnar side, is the flexor digitorum profundus, and we see that here. It's marked in red, so this is the flexor digitorum profundus. Um, muscle and it will divide into its uh, individual tendons as well 
that would make their way into the four digits. We see some other very important structures here in terms of neurovascular uh, structure, so let's review that. The first one is the brachial artery that we have seen earlier in the arm and the cubital fossa, and it now makes its way into the forearm. And as it makes its way into the forearm, it divides into its branches. The radial artery is this artery that is seen here on the radial side of the forearm, and it goes down all the way up to the wrist. And if you focus on the ulnar or medial side, you see the other branch, which is the ulnar artery, and it also goes down all the way into the wrist. These are the a major arterial supply for the forearm, and they also cross the wrist and enter the hand. There's one other structure that you see here, which is the median nerve, and it's running in the arm next to the brachial artery, just medial to it, enters the cubital fossa, and then enters the forearm, and makes its way all the way down here, and uh, enters into uh, the wrist, and we'll look at its course at the wrist uh, at its subsequent lesson. And there's one final structure here, which is the most medial of the nerves. It is known as the ulnar nerve, and it's seen right here. It has its course from the arm into the forearm, going behind or posterior to the medial epicondyle. And then it goes down the medial or the inner side of the arm and is accompanied by the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve come close to each other somewhere in its course in the mid forearm and then they cross into the wrist, uh, cross the wrist joint into the hand very close to each other. And if you look at the wrist, uh, there is a structure here, which is an important structure known as the flexor retinaculum. And this structure keeps most of these tendons and nerves and vessels in their place uh, in a very um, uh, specific arrangement. And we'll look at that when we look at the detailed anatomy of the carpal tunnel. If we remove some of these structures in this area and remove uh, the superficial structures here, we can then see the deepest of the deep muscles, which is this muscle here, known as the pronator quadratus. Note its shape, it's quadrilateral or rectangular in shape, and it extends between the distal ulna and the distal radius. This muscle is supplied also by the median nerve.